Hi guys, I hope you're good and welcome to Creative Cuts, a channel where I build, paint and create things. For today's video I'm going to build an erupting volcano, which also gave me an excuse to build and paint a model that's been sitting in a drawer for a while. I adapted my design a little so it could be also used as a display base for this model. Of course it's <laughs> complete overkill, but who cares when it looks cool, right? Before I begin, I really want to thank everyone for the absolutely amazing support so far on the channel. I'm constantly humbled by your kind words, so thank you. So first off, I'm going to take a 3 inch sheet of polystyrene and cut this into smaller pieces. Then I cut a rough circle in all of these pieces using the first piece I cut as a guide, so they're all roughly equal. I fix these together using toothpicks and some PVA glue. I weighed this down with something heavy on top and let this fully dry. Once dry, I take my Proxon hot wire cutter and begin to shape the polystyrene cube into the beginnings of what will be my mountain. This could easily be done with a sharp knife, but as I have the tool, of course I'll use it. For anyone who has never used a hot wire cutter, I've found that it's best to take your time, let the wire do the work rather than trying to force it through. I took some offcuts and began to add these to the base to expand the footprint and give my mountain more shape. I used a hot glue gun to quickly attach these and then continued to work on the shape of the mountain, carving in troughs and textures as I go. Next I take some sculptor mold, I mix this to a relatively thick consistency and begin to fill in the gaps. Sculptor mold is a great product for this as it has a, a naturally rough texture once dry, so it's a great way to quickly achieve a rock like structure. For smoother areas you can add a little water and smooth as needed. While this was drying, I took a sheet of plywood and traced the outline of the base and then cut this out with a jigsaw. As ever, when using power tools, always be careful. Pay attention to any trailing wires and take your time. I smoothed the edges with a palm sander so the wood feels nicer to the touch. And up until this point, my idea was working great. I had planned to run fairy lights along the lava channels and cover this with something semi-transparent. What I found was that the LEDs were far too spotty and looked terrible in my opinion. So, feeling a little deflated, I had to rethink things and came up with the idea to hollow out the channels and use a bigger light source. I used a power drill with a big drill bit to carve the channels into the polystyrene. This worked great, but made a ton of mess. <laughs> Curse you little polystyrene balls. I ordered a cheap set of push button LEDs from Amazon, as I thought these could easily be concealed in the base of the mountain and let even more light pass through the lava flows. So I strategically placed these and cut these out. And to finish off the base I added some felt pads. Now here is a really important tip when working with any foam in general. 
if you try to prime or paint your model directly with spray paint, you might find the solvent in the spray paint can melt the polystyrene. You may want this effect, but here we don't. So I covered the entire surface with a good layer of Mod Podge mixed with some black paint. Once dry, you're free to spray the surface with much less risk of melting your model. There was a bit of a gap between the wooden base and the base of the volcano, so I mixed up a little more sculptor mold and filled in the gaps. And as I had already mixed up a little more than I needed, I, I used the leftover mix to add some rocks and smaller stones. Once dry, I gave this all another coat of black. Next, I wanted to try an idea that I had, and I think the overall result was really effective. Hot glue can be bought in a variety of colours, so I got a box of black hot glue sticks and thought that if I melted this over the surface of my rocks, this could simulate the cooled molten lava that you often find in volcanoes. I gradually built these up, letting them dry before adding further applications. It was a little glossy for my taste, so I added another layer of black paint and this soon knocked off the sheen. I took some Agrellan Earth Crackle Paint from Citadel and liberally applied this to the areas of the rock face. Once dried, this cracked beautifully and added another bit of textural detail to the surface. And now for my lava. I did a number of tests with different materials and different ways of colouring it. I mixed up some yellow ink with some matte medium, some structure gel, some Mod Podge. I also tried hot glue as I thought this may help diffuse the light a little as it's cloudy in appearance. What quickly became clear was that the other materials just weren't right for the purpose and but the structure gel dried completely clear but with enough body to be able to hold its shape while still being flexible to mold into the channels I'd carved. So I took a plastic lid and mixed in some ink with the structure gel and spread this out into thin sheets varying the thickness to make some parts more transparent than others. Once dry, I carefully peeled these off with a scraper and began to place these onto the model. I used sections and slowly began to trim these to size as needed. The structure gel was really easy to cut. And it also glues really well with super glue, creating an almost instant bond. And this part really felt like the point of no return. So fully committed, I continued this around the whole model.
I then mixed up a little more structure gel with the same ink and used this to blend the edges and add a little more texture. This is the first time I've used structure gel in this way and it's definitely given me loads of ideas for future projects and different ways of using it. I repeated this process with the cap of the volcano, again blending all the edges into each other so everything appears as if it's one continuous piece. I wasn't worried about being too neat at this stage, as I could control the edges better when painting. And so on that note, I grabbed an airbrush loaded with some thinned down fluorescent orange and began to lightly add some color to the lava. I did this in thin coats, focusing on the edges to make sure I preserved some of the transparency in the structure gel. Next I grabbed some transparent red oxide and sprayed this in uneven patterns along the edges. And finally, I add a little more transparent red, just to turn up the heat. Then I add some red and acrylic black and mix this together to give myself a, a third tone. And starting with the red in the areas closest to the lava, and progressively getting darker as I moved away, I dry brushed these paints lightly to give a reasonably smooth variation. And you may ask, why are you not doing this with your airbrush? And the answer is, is that by using a brush, I'm able to add far more variation to the amount of paint I'm applying, giving me more control and only catching the most pronounced edges whilst giving me additional texture in the process. It was really fun to begin to define the edges with the black as I could really begin to imagine huge boulders slowly breaking apart under immense heat. To add to this effect, I got a bunch of small stones and pieces of cork which I'd sprayed black 
and slowly, one by one, applying these within the lava flow to represent rocks that were in their final stages of disintegration. This took quite some time, but in my view, definitely time well spent, as I'm really happy with the outcome. To complete this step, I gave the black a final dry brush with some grey, just to pick out some of the detail. And one last additional step and a small glimpse into the way my mind works, I guess. I've been building a very customized Chaos Space Marine army for Warhammer 40,000. I used this gold cosmic sparkle paint and when coated over black, it looks fantastic. It bounces light in ways that can only really translate in person. So I had the crazy idea of Painting my whole army in this colour as an alternative to the usual black and gold. I then undercoat all the trim in brown before giving it two coats of gold. <laughs> an insane amount of work for a whole army, but I'm not in a rush. So, some things take time. But it was a perfect excuse to paint up this Heldrake model, as I thought he could make a great guardian of my volcano, and the volcano would be a great way to display the model when it's not in use. I'm not going to go over the whole painting process for this model in this video, but I just wanted to share this little insight into my weird and wonderful world. Thank you for coming on this journey with me, and if you've liked what you've seen and you would like to see more, I have plenty of other builds on my channel that you can check out. You can subscribe to stay up to date with future videos, show YouTube you like this video by hitting the like button, and sharing it with anyone you think might find it interesting. This project started with an idea, a few bits of foam, some glue, some problems to solve, and from nothing, I created a volcano that will breathe fire forever. Or at least until I need to change the batteries. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and enjoy.